Hello there. I'm looking up at, is that better? Maybe you can see my eyes a little bit. I'm looking up at the goshawk nest up here uh, that I visited uh, about 10 days ago. And 10 days ago, there was a goshawk chick sitting in that nest. And today, you won't be able to see it up there. But there's the nest right there. Uh, and there is no young goshawk in the nest. So I don't know a ton about goshawks, but I would expect that that bird isn't too far away. Uh, I don't have one of the adults screaming in their kak, 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 kind of noise. So maybe the adults are out hunting, but I would imagine that chick is probably, I don't know, maybe within 50 yards or so of the nest. Just a total guess. I'm gonna put the camera down and go kind of quietly walk around in the woods and see if I can track down that uh, fledged goshawk. That'll be cool to find. Uh, fledged or the, the immature goshawks are kind of brown and beige, kind of speckled. And then as they mature, they turn into the really cool looking like slate blue and light gray with like the cool eyebrow and the red eyes. They look awesome. So in a perfect world, I would love to photograph the adults. I think they're cooler looking, but uh, I definitely will, if given the opportunity, photograph that juvenile. And maybe I'll learn to appreciate its looks a, bit, a, bit, a little bit more. But uh, anyway, I'm gonna go hike around, see if I can track down that little youngster that's flying around now. Okay, here we go. That means uh, one of the adult goshawk found me. And therefore I found it, because it's talking to me up there. It's way too high to photograph right now. And it's backlit just with uh, the bright sky right behind it. So no photo here, but I'm gonna wait now that I know where one of the adults is. I'm gonna hang out and see if it wants to have its picture taken today. Cool. Okay, so I found the mini goshawk. And it's not that mini. It's like already like that tall. <laughs> Pretty big bird. But I found it. It's definitely the juvenile. It's sitting up here not too far away from the nest, as expected. It's just tucked up against a tree hanging out. So I'm going to set up here and try and be kind of quiet and... Uh, hang out, not move around too much, and uh, wait and see if I can get lucky with, hopefully, the adults coming in. I saw one of the adults quite a ways over that way, and uh, I got sick of watching it sit in the tree, so I went looking for the uh, juvenile some more. I found the juvenile, the adult's still back that way. I'd love to um, have a situation where one of the adults came in and maybe fed it or something like that, so... I'm gonna just kind of hang here, uh, try and stay quiet and stay in one place, let them be comfortable and see if maybe I'll get lucky and observe a feeding or some kind of interaction would be awesome. Or the maybe the juvenile trying to fly around or something. We'll see what happens. Maybe nothing will happen, but maybe something will happen. But I'm gonna hang out. I'm also, while I'm here, I'm gonna check on the huckleberry crop this year because it's, it's late July as I'm filming this, and it's almost huckleberry season. We could be right at the beginning of huckleberry season. And so I'm not sitting right in any huckleberries right now, but there are huckleberries in this area. So I might poke around a little bit. I would love to get into some wild huckleberries out here. That would really make the uh, icing on the cake. So a lot of good things could happen tonight, including huckleberries. All right, enough of that. I'm gonna zip, zip it and watch this bird, see if something happens. And I am gonna have my camera set up ready for some action, so I'll probably get it set up with a 500th of a second, get my exposure dialed in, 
to where the bird's going to be, have a, the approximate focal length that I'll want to have in case there's two birds. So I'm going to want to shoot it kind of wide uh, in hope that I could get the two bird interaction and have enough um, field of view to be able to capture both birds in the frame, obviously. So I'm going to have that all set up. So if something happens, it's going to happen in a split second and I'm going to be ready for it with everything set up, ready to go with my focus point where I want it to be, uh, focus locked in on manual exposure, and I'll be good to go. what happens when you just sit quietly in the woods. Sometimes animals just walk right up to you and they're not even afraid of you. I'm even, I'm talking to the camera and she's right here. I can't believe she's not afraid. She looks pretty skinny. I think she needs to eat some more. Now she moved. I can't see her anymore. Not much happening here. A lot of sitting around. It's like super quiet. No songbirds are even singing. Maybe it's too hot because it is pretty hot. It's like low 80s, which is hot for us here in Wyoming or at least in the Jackson Hole area. That's pretty hot for us and for the birds and the bears and the elk and everybody that has fur and feathers. Anyway, I wait. And I keep looking around because I never know what's sneaking up on me. Boop! All right. Oh, there's a tree going right through my head. That's a total no-no in photography. Don't let a tree go right through your head. For videography, maybe it's the same thing. All right, well, I think I'm going to pack it up, pack it in, and get out of here. The adult and the juvenile have both just been sitting there for hours and not right next to each other, quite a ways apart, but just sitting there, not doing anything. So in the interest of trying to make a interesting video today, I'm going to leave this scene. Uh, I would normally probably stick around uh, maybe until dark, but I have a couple hours of daylight left and I want to try and find something else to photograph while making this video. So I'm uh, going to roll on out of here, let these two be alone again. And that deer, that skinny little deer, it looked like it needed to eat some more stuff. But So I'm going to get out of their forest for a while, go back to my car, and then 
do another drive around um, to a different spot where I'm going to go look for an owl. So, it's a total risky move. It might not pay off at all. I might see nothing else the rest of the night, and I might miss some great moment here. But I'm going to roll the dice and take that risk, all for the sake of the video, of course, and uh, hope I get lucky. So, I'll see you next stop, and uh, cross our fingers that we're going to find something good. Okay, let's roll. <laughs> Right as I was leaving, I found a little patch with some ripe huckleberries. All right, I'm gonna eat a couple of these huckleberries and then I'm gonna go. Nom, 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 nom. Just a couple more and then I'll leave. Mm. Mm. That's what I'm talking about. Mm. Happy Huckleberry to me.